Hi guys, I'm doing macro photography today um, and primarily I'm going to concentrate on dragonflies and damselflies. If any butterflies um, pop by then that would be great but it's damselflies and dragonflies that are my main subject. And if you look behind me you can see there's a, a little pond and uh, dragonflies and damselflies uh, you find them around um, still slow moving water so ponds really still lakes uh, slow moving rivers they're all the sort of habitats where you're going to find uh, dragonflies and damselflies uh, obviously it's the sort of subject that you're going to shoot in the summer months so they'll be out from sort of may through to about june something uh, sorry june july august through to about september so about may to september sometimes a little bit earlier sometimes a little bit later but they're the main times you're going to find your dragonflies and your damselflies along with lots of other insects such as butterflies etc. Uh, I've got my macro lens with me today it's a 90mm macro lens and I put it on my crop sensor body and the main reason for that is is because my crop sensor body will magnify the focal length by 1.5 so it'll turn it into an almost a 135 macro lens which means I don't have to get quite so close to my subject and I've got less chance of scaring them uh, away so that's why I'm using my crop sensor body. Uh, if I was doing flowers uh, where obviously the subject's not going to move I would probably use my full frame body um, and there'll be a link above here uh, about camera bodies and the best ones for wildlife photography uh, so um, that explains how that crop censored um, magnification works um, now the thing about macro photography the hardest thing is um, focusing and depth of field because the reason these macro lenses um, can photograph very small insects is because they have the ability to focus really close to the subject so 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 close and normal lenses don't have that ability but one of the major things that um, factors that you have to factor in when you're thinking about depth of field is how close you are to your subject so if we're really close to our dragonfly or our damselfly we're not going to have very much depth of field so focusing has got to be spot on um, and uh, what I tend to do is when I'm shooting um, a one-to-one -one life size ratio of macro shots so when the animal is the small insect is really big in the frame I manually focus because the autofocus is not that great and I normally use a monopod because it means um, getting into sort of uh, awkward angles is a bit easier than using a tripod if I was doing flowers I'd probably use a tripod and then what I basically do is um, I focus manually until I'm really close to, um, to the, the subject being in focus and then I just rock backwards and forwards just slightly on the monopod and you see the subject just popping in and out of focus and as soon as it pops into focus you hit the shutter button. Obviously if you hit the shutter button and you're on a continuous uh, release mode you'll take a number of pictures so you're sort of hedging your bets a little bit and it means that, that one of those pictures should be in sharp focus. But as I say, as you move backwards and forwards with the tripod, small adjustments, you'll see that focusing pop in and out. And as soon as it pops into focus, you hit the shutter button. The other thing is you do need quite fast shutter speeds because, again, because we're close to our subject, um, the any movement of that subject or any movement we're making to put that picture in and out of focus is going to be magnified so you have to shoot with a fast shutter speed so generally uh, nice bright overcast conditions are great uh, I've got sunshine and cloud today and I don't mind a bit of cloud because that makes the, the light nice and soft and contrasty um, not too contrasty sorry but you don't want it to be too cloudy and dark because we still want enough light to give us that fast shutter speed and if it means increasing my ISO number to give me a fast shutter speed that's fine uh, occasionally I will use a fill-in flash which is like having a little blip of flash to light up those shadows a little bit that you can do as well and if it's a flower often I'll use reflectors so the key thing with macro photography is uh, obviously macro lenses make the job way way easier you can use uh, close-up filters which fit on the front of the lens uh, you can use bellows which are like a big sort of movable bellow that you put a lens into but they're quite difficult to use and you can use things called reversal rings which turn the lens your regular lens you turn it round uh, and it fits onto the camera the opposite way round to how it should do but it means you can focus a lot more closely but you generally use lose all your autofocus and all your auto exposure so by far and away the best way to shoot 
full size one to one ratio macro images is to use a macro lens and uh, there's some great ones on the market I'm a Nikon user but I'm actually using a Tamron macro lens and they're super sharp uh, they're normally a fixed uh, fixed focal length and as I say this is a 90 millimeter macro lens but it behaves like a 135 macro lens because I'm on my D500 crop sensor camera so I'm gonna have a wander around now and um, I've as I say I've seen Emperor dragonflies I've seen da ruddy darters um, I've seen quite a few butterflies so I'm gonna wander around but they're more likely to be over the water that's where they've been flying we've got reed beds in the background so I'm gonna look for them because what you tend to find with dragonflies in particular is they'll have a favored perch so they'll fly around like mad but they'll come back to the same spot so if I can find an area where uh, one of these dragonflies is perching then I can set up near that that perch and just wait for the dragonfly to come back and I often find that's the most successful way to shoot um, a moving sort of insect macro picture uh, the other time uh, to shoot dragonflies and butterflies is early in the morning when uh, they're still quite cold and they're not as active as they are uh, later on in the day so as this is mid-afternoon um, I'm going to need to find a perch and uh, one of their perches and wait for them to come back and then I'm ready to shoot um, and I'm also going to use um, at some stage this afternoon probably my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom because that's quite useful it doesn't give you that really really close macro shot but with the uh, close focusing abilities of modern zoom lenses you can get the actual insect quite big in the frame and for flight shots of dragonflies I find that 200 to 500 zoom is really good plus the fact sometimes you can't get close enough there's all this sort of foliage and brambles in the way sometimes and they don't always perch where you want them to perch it'd be great if they perch right at the front next to your um, the footpath and it would be easy but it's not always the case is it so we have to work for our photos sometimes and I find the 200 to 500 zoom you can get some great insect, insect shots with that as well so macro lens for those really pin sharp ultra close-ups and a 200 to 500 for those slightly more out the way pictures where the, the dragonfly or the butterfly is too far away into the sort of the foliage or the bushes for me to get close enough and also flight shots is probably easier or it's definitely easier using a zoom lens so I think that's about it for now I'm going to stake out an area uh, and wait for these dragonflies to come back and I'm hoping also to get some flight shots as well although they are super fast and that's really really tricky um, so that's it for now, I'll speak to you soon guys. Right, I've got a ruddy darter right in front of me. Um, it's a little bit windy at the moment, so I'm just going to wait for it to still, but it's coming back to the same perch, so it's flying around and coming straight back, so this is really good. Uh, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer, because I'm on the macro lens at the moment, and then just going to flick my focus backwards and forwards, and focus also on, obviously on the lens, and see what we can get. The thing you have to watch is because the sun's coming this way, as I get closer, I've got to try and make sure I don't get my own shadow on the actual subject, and that's really awkward, but I'm just about managing to go to one side. So this ruddy dust is just in these reed beds here. It's fantastic, and I'm getting some really great shots. Um, it's been perching here for a good three or four minutes at the moment, and then uh, it flies off and then comes back and perches again. So now I know where it is, I can really concentrate on getting the composition I want. So this is fantastic. First shot's in the bag. Hopefully we'll get some emperor dragonflies as well, but ruddy data, all looking good. This is fabulous. Got it, fabulous. Okay, so there's first shots in the bag. Um, it's just flown over there, but I'm sure it'll be back again on the perch. I'm just gonna check my exposure, check my focus, and then we'll wait for it to drop back in and hopefully come back on the same perch again. But this is fantastic, really, really good photography. Macro photography is just a, a superb branch. It's really challenging because of the focusing issues and depth of field. Oh, I've also got a little blue damosel just down below. Uh, you're not gonna see it on, uh, on the... Um, on the camera here but it's just down below me I'm going to try and get that as well now so we're getting 
lots and lots of uh, insects come in and you just have to be patient and just wait and they will appear and keep nice and still so this is fabulous um yeah i'm gonna crack on now and um i'll speak to you soon guys this is i'm having a brilliant brilliant afternoon uh, yeah it's great bye for now Hi guys, um, I've just got a, uh, a, a hawker dragonfly, it's like a brown hawker, uh, I'm not sure what species it is, I'm going to have to look that up when I get home, but it's a brown hawker dragonfly, and it's literally just on the reed beds uh, to my right hand side, nice and sharp, it was nice and still, not much wind, so I'm really pleased with that, it's been a cracking afternoon, um, I haven't done macro for a while, and it's been really really good fun, so I'll put that picture on the end of this vlog, plus the other ones I've taken, and I've got some really nice shots today. And macro photography is different to any other type of photography. You need real patience, and it's a really technical type of photography, but very, very enjoyable. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video, and if you have enjoyed it, and you haven't already, if you could consider subscribing to my channel, that would be great. And if you like this video, if you can give it the thumbs up, like, uh, a like that would be great and also if you've got any um any tips or any uh, anything you, you like to share about macro photography if you can put them in the comments below that would be great always good to hear from you guys that's about it um really really enjoyed this afternoon so um i'll say bye for now uh, thanks very much for watching and listening and uh, i'll speak to you soon guys